is, yeah, that, is, that is very true, guys. Welcome uh, back to, of course, the episode. That episode is episode 69. We've almost made it through almost three quarters of a century. Three quarters of a century in the last, I guess, 78, 79 days. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And Justin Hess is straight in again, uh, reclaiming or still continuing to claim the title of the first commenter. Uh, g'day, Andrew Cameron, Mandrew Macaroon, straight away jumping in on the comments as well. Guys, welcome, of course, to the happy hour. It is wine for the people. Uh, the only, I guess, wine show where we don't take ourselves too seriously. We take our wines way too seriously. We typically blind taste them, we get them wrong and make complete fools of ourselves. And tonight we have uh, someone that I've been really, really excited to introduce you guys to. I'm pretty excited to introduce everyone that comes on the show, to be honest. Um, but I really wanted to, especially the next couple of days, we're going to showcase a lot of what I would determine to be young people in the industry doing some really great things uh, and doing things at different ends of the year. In 2017, <laughs> we have Michael Downer from Myrtle Hill. Thanks for joining us, brother. I'm glad that we can still, you know, consider myself young and uh, yeah, great to be here, Brendan. Thank you. Need some wine? You top yep. up? Yeah, just, yeah. Yes, yeah, sweet as. Please. Um, so, first question, straight cab off the rank, I reckon, that thing that I'm dying to ask you. Um, how the fuck do you become such a good winemaker? Like, where did you cut your teeth? How did how did that happen? How did, what are the elements that are needed? Tell us the whole thing. I'm well, curious. Well, okay, well... Um, thank you, but uh, you know we all make, make mistakes along the way, and I think it's uh, you know this level of attention to detail and um, different levels of skews to work with to hide some of the shit that you have made mistakes <laughs> with definitely helps. So that's that's good winemaking, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is how we hide shit. But uh, yeah, look, I guess the journey you know, began growing up on uh, the family property here in the Adelaide Hills, out at Oak Bank, and um, you know, seen a vineyard being established in. 98 and then I guess that led me down the path of going to uh, study viticulture initially at the University of Adelaide um, and I guess going to you know back in those days at, at the University of Adelaide and seeing so many people come from all around the world just to come to study at Adelaide was um, something that was yeah really fascinating Cause, cause, to see. <laughs> no as in like people because there's no no one in Adelaide so just to yeah. see people travel to Adelaide like why are you here yeah this, what are you doing to see different people is uh, <laughs> quite unique and get outside of your little bubble of Adelaide for sure um, but yeah to, to realize that you know Adelaide and South Australia is such a, a, a mecca for wine yeah. around the world and um, I guess whilst studying you know the the, the vidi program I, I lent into the winemaking side of things and um, have a look back, went and sort of cut my teeth at Sharon Smith for four years and really got that background of, um, I guess, attention to detail as yep. um, they offer with their wines. And then after I'd done my time there, wanted to go and explore a few different things and travelled overseas, uh, went to Italy, all through France, did a vintage in Italy, came back and worked in Victoria at best. And prior to that, I'd actually been over at Cape Mattel and WA. So, so I went around a few different places and There's got some, some different Mattel influences. Best, <laughs> Sean and Smith. Next. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good um, so, resume. Uh, definitely, I want to try to acknowledge, because usually at this point, what I do is I actually just, I completely cut off, I cut off Twitch. Uh, and this guy has become like a serial pest, but I just have to read out this fucking comic. Sometimes I poop in the shower and play Waffle Stomp. Um, well, I'll tell you what, if you guys uh, ran out of toilet paper during COVID, you probably would have had to. Um, uh, hashtag, uh, have you ever uh, had a man? I have not. And uh, you're not a man until you've had a man. That is uh, completely, entirely your opinion. I have uh, friends, although would agree with you. Um, but thank you. Uh, Dude in the beanie was picking his ear. This is great. We have this guy <laughs> that, is just, that is just trolling us. I love this. I've died. We have, we've gone 69 episodes without a proper troll and we've finally got one. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's an apt episode. <laughs> that's, that's so good. Um, we're going to keep him around for a little longer. Uh, you know, t tell us, what are you drinking, Mr. Have You Ever Had a Man? Um, I would like to know what you're drinking at home. Uh, what wines do you enjoy? Um, and in particular, where are you? Where are you chiming in from? Because you had a really cool Japanese name before. You changed your name. You can't just keep changing your name. Um, anyway, you, Sean Smith, best Kate Mantell, jumping around the place a little bit. Yeah. Cutting your teeth across Australia. Ever, ever go overseas? Yeah, over to Italy and Barolo. Oh yeah. He did, he, did, he did say that. He did say 2010. Where where were you at in Barolo? Uh, Vietti. Got some honest there for. Oh yeah, true. That was pretty cool. Um, and a really good opportunity to visit a lot of places. Steve Crawford was there on that vintage. 
Um, we talked about him before. Oh, yeah, out at uh, GD Virus. So was that yeah. In, in... Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. so we hung out a lot. Um, and he was quite... Con- he didn't have a car, so I used to pick him up. Um, he could speak a bit of Italian, so that was very convenient in terms of getting <laughs> around and doing some of these visits. Um, so, yeah, we had a blast over there. I sort of, sort of settled in for, um, yeah, about two, three months. It was great. Yeah, would be. Got this, you know, travel season. Got to see all did you, did, now, this is the most critical question. Did you lose weight or put on weight? Oh, God, that's going back a while. There. Well, I would definitely say definitely put on weight, yeah. Because it's like Castellino filet. Now, that was set up. We had a lot of pasta with a lot of cheese. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's one of the things in Broly, they're just really, really blessed because they either have a really, um, like, they have a really great vintage and then a shitty truffle season or have a really shitty vintage and have a really great yeah. truffle season. Um, I got to wear there in 2014. Right. Of course, the wettest, I think 2011, uh, plus a couple more numbers. Okay, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it yeah. was a challenge. It was, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. We have PTSD, actually, from 2011. <laughs> <laughs> but um, even saying that, 2010, you know, there was quite a bit of rain. Uh, but yeah, it was a bit of a summer. So the pretty well regarded. Yeah, I think out of the toughest vintages, we tend to actually see some of the most interesting wines. Mm. Um, and it's really interesting going back and looking at a couple of vintages. What, what are the vintages that you've been so psyched about at Murdoch Hill? Oh, okay. Um, oh, looking back, you know, recently I've been sort of digging back to some of the earlier wines. Um, and recently I did a little lineup of all the 2014 vintage wines that are made from Pinot Chardonnay, Pinot Vineyard, Pinot and Syrah. Yep. And to see expression of the vintage across the different varietals. Um, and it was a, a year of two vintages, you know, there was an um, extraordinary amount of heat coming into the vintage and then there was about 120 millimetres of rain in about the middle of February and the season This is switched. both both 2020 or 2019? This is 20, so 2014. Uh, oh, 20, 2014, yeah. 2014? Yeah, yeah, going back to sort of looking back at a vintage where there'd been a lot of rain and then yeah, from that wow. period it was really cool and overcast and mild and we picked some of the Chardonnay and Piccadilly in April. Um, and to try them now and, and see how they're expressing themselves. And I think my winemaking was quite raw back then. Um, and then also to see the expression of Syrah from our vineyard in the cooler year, um, that more white pepper sort of expression was really interesting. So yeah, that was nice to reflect back on. Um, more recently, I think, look, 2018, um, they're all good at, for their own you know, ways. And um, 18 was probably a showy vintage 17 more in line with that 14 cool mm. year um but yeah pretty excited you know we were always striving to find ways to improve and develop our wine so um the coming 19 and 20s i think would be pretty exciting to do, so, so uh, i'm a pretty open sort of proponent for for uh, appropriate varieties in certain sites and yep. um and, and in different sort of places across australia and one of those things that i, I tend to find and this is um uh on the whole, is it's really hard to actually find really great Pinot and Chardonnay in the hills. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, at least looking at the data, not the ideal climate for it, but you've managed to produce some of the most exciting, particularly in Chardonnay territory, some of the most mm-hmm. exciting Chardonnays that we've actually seen. What what does it actually take? Is it is it the, the unique site that you've got, or do you do things viticulturally a little bit differently, or, you know, is it really, is it winemaking? Is it having a deft hand? What's the... Well, I think I probably agree with you with Pinot. There's very limited, I think, capacity. You know, there's very select sites that produce out in Pino and Adelaide Hills, you know, especially up around Piccadilly, Lenswood. I think Chardonnay can produce consistently well across the breadth of, of, of the Adelaide Hills. And um, I think it's this, you know, the cold nights, um, that great acidity, um, you know, the driver fruit that we get. But yeah, I mean, of course, you know, there are some winemaking things that, that we do, but, you know, I think everyone's sort of leaning into the same direction and it's sort of coming expression of the more of the region than winemaker hopefully you know that will be probably the the ultimate um going forward but i think at the moment there's probably a little bit more what what is it? let's be honest there's always going to be more winemaking influence sometimes in chardonnay with the oak handling things but if we can find ways to express the fruit and maybe different parts of the, the adelaide hills i think that would be a good thing well this this is a really great um i'm i'm <laughs> What is going on? This is this guy. I went. <laughs> he's saying some pretty lewd stuff, so I'm really sorry to everyone. We have actually stopped Does streaming to it? Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I will have to uh, take off the um, uh, the the public comments thing. I think in a second. Uh, if you were Jesus, would you turn your poop into wine? <laughs> I assure you, I would. Uh, that is definitely going to happen. G'day Terry. G'day Jan. Uh, Kia ora. Um, 
I would like to know for you guys at home, uh, drinking Chardonnay, well, how do you like your Chardonnays? How would you describe your Chardonnays? So if you've had Chardonnays from across the world, where do you like to have them from? Um, because there is a, like Chardonnay is one of those amazing grape varieties that actually has so much, um, uh, that can take on so much input from the winemaker. It's mm. almost to a, a degree like a blank canvas grape variety and you can sort of meld it and play with it. Is it a way to, you know, do, do you seek the thrill of Chardonnay because of that? I think, um, yeah, it is exciting, but also kind of feel like don't actually really, and, you know, making decisions based on that. Um, look, and really just trying to keep it fresh and pure. Sometimes one week you might see, you know, some flinty reductive character, and next week you might see some oxidative things. So, you know, there's some wild things that are always changing and evolving in barrel. Um, I just really just want to get into the bottle and pray for the best. <laughs> um, and have you ever had a man who said, I like to have my Chardonnay with a bit of Chard? I think you meant Chart. <laughs> Uh, and indeed, uh, that could well be shabbily, uh, if you really put your mind to it. A little bit reductive, a little bit farty. Hey. <laughs> it's, you know, each, 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 each to your own. Um, well, you've, let's go jump straight into blind tasting now, because um, I am particularly... I, I always watch for Noah's excitement uh, when, when sort of guests bring in uh, these particular wines, because uh, and Noah's excitement is sort of off the charts a little he bit. So, excited, uh, he did yeah, yeah, he got uh, quite excited. So um, I am very excited to see, uh, see what this, this ends up being. Uh, New Zealand Mutare Hills. Uh, I think New Zealand Chardonnay is like just got so much going for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I kind of feel, you know, they've probably taken a bit of time to find their place with Chardonnay. Um, yeah. It's kind of like, um, I don't know what I'm going to say anymore. Let's have a little bit of wine. The Jiggy Hill likes big butter full. New Zealand Hunter Valley WA. Basically, Give me Chardonnay, hey. give me oak, and I don't 100%. care where it comes from. Hundred yeah. percent new. Hundred <laughs> percent new. It's like is it oh, cool coconutty <laughs> and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Diastyl. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't mind it sometimes. Yeah, and in absolutely. fact, it was Josh Pick, and I've said it a couple of times. The best word for it was seductive. Mm -hmm. It's a seductive flavour. It's a, a seductive tasting profile. Yeah, um, I've definitely seen now in the market people were real, especially in the entry level point of Chardonnay. People are really wanting it to be a Chardonnay, you know, and mm, showcase mm -hmm, the buttery, oaky sort of elements. Um, it's probably when we get to the, the higher level sort of segment of the market where we're looking for more re refinement, um, you know, more citrus fruit and all these different elements and aspects of the wine. So, yeah, it's a fascinating market um, in Chardonnay. Oh man, we have like a, a ton of really good fans actually chiming in at the moment. Um, all like Chardonnay fans. We've got hey. Marilla <laughs> Muse Chardonnay from Tassie. Melanie, thanks so much for chiming in. Uh, Sue Bond, I, I tend to think of Giaconda when I think of Chardonnay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like I, I tend to go to more towards um, like the opposite end, like, like Margaret River. Oh yeah. Uh, go, go to the opposite end of the country. Can, um, yeah. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, can you? Can I buy one of the hoodies? Yep, linked in the description. Uh, you know where to find them. Uh, haven't had any Chardis from around the world, but I'm loving the Hersey 2016 Cabo Chardis Light and Refined. Man, that was a good deal. <laughs> 25 bones. 25 uh, bones. Oh, oh yeah. I, heard, <laughs> I, I was talking to Damon Kernan today. I was telling me that he... Was that the one that he had in the segment with Jono? Yeah, because yep, I yep. think he finished up here and then went to their place and continued to get on the piss. Yeah, right. And I think he just brought a whole bunch of that Chardonnay as well. And he's like, yeah, I just decided, like, tonight. 25 bucks. <laughs> 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 like, wow. Yeah. That's insane. I think, yeah, pretty much heaps of the people who watch this bought a bunch from yeah. yeah, I think you saw like three or four dozen or something like that. What about the butter on the 16 John O'Hersey Cloak Hyper, like a butter sandwich with no bread? <laughs> <laughs> Terry! That's, that's, oh, yeah, Terry, right. that's too... I like Chardonnay with less oak influence rather than more, but I'm uh, not uh, particularly well versed with different styles from around the world. So, well, actually the one K, a BK One Ball Chardonnay, mm. whatever the style is, that, that's how I like it, which is a bit more, it's like, it's not as hardcore as like shabbily, not as lean and not, no. not as tight, but it's a little bit there. It's, a, it's interesting, there has been quite a lot of comments on, you know, um, seeking for bigger buttery styles where, you know, I think there was... Because we, we, we yeah. gravitate towards Shabley. We're like, yeah, give me the acid, yeah. give me something that hurts yeah. us. Winemakers Shabley. are masochistic, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we like things that hurt us. We like big tannin like Nebbiolo. <laughs> we love high acid Germanic style Rieslings. Yeah. Uh, and, and Acid you know, junkies. Acid junkies. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. It's, like, it's a thing, Cheap man. Love yeah. me a bit of acid, but it yeah. seems like everyone else is like, just give me the butter, give me the, the coating sort of effect, the warming effect. Um, I'm down with that. But speaking of... of, of uh, Ch uh, Chardonnays. I have a sneaking suspicion that this might even be one. Um, now I'm going to shove the comments down. <laughs> no, I had that ready to go. Um, all right, so let's play. Let's play a bit of blind tasting. A bit of options. 
Do you want to run options, Michael, or do you want to? Yeah, I can run them. That's um, yeah. So uh, I game. guess uh, yes, yeah. Played a few times. Um, one of my passions, actually. Playing oh, cool. Options, so very excited to be here tonight. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Try and trip us up. Yeah, it's it's like a fun. pre-game interview hype up thing going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not just about the wine. It is, you know, part of the game and the fun of it is is the questions as well. And, I'm, I'm quite, just gonna me I'm up quite, quite known for actually just fucking up the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, okay, we'll All see right. how we go. All right, so, um, um, so I guess yeah. First question: Is this wine from the new or old world? Uh, probably. Well, consider, the considering we're in in, in black, black glasses, first I'm going to say it's a white wine. Oh yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely a white wine. Okay, white well, um, wine it is correct. Tannin wise, yeah, that isn't actually sealed. A number of people have just realized they can just kick the whole sink <laughs> off here. But anyway, it's not your fault, it's the sink's I'm fault. Not taking it out. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, I think it's uh, I think it's New World. <laughs> well done, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very good at this game. <laughs> yeah, so, like this already. <laughs> Can't give it a ball straight away. Um, okay, so from the new world. Yeah. Is this wine from the United States, Australia, or New Zealand? I think it's from New Zealand. From Australia. From Australia, it's remarkable acidity, very dainty mm. fruit profile, very deft hand of, of oak, which sort of led me down that that path. Yeah, quite crackling and mineral. Um, the, if you told me it's for Adelaide Hills, fuck you, no, it's not. I mean, that's <laughs> I, and it is well done to whoever made it because that's actually pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> it's the 2016 John O'Hersey. Click over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is about exactly how it went last time. It's <laughs> No, okay, cool. So it's it's it's, it's it Australian. Is Australian. Okay, yeah. yeah, cool. You know, and you've got to appreciate in Australia there is such a diverse range and style and climate that Chardonnay is grown. Mm. I mean, the yeah, number one white grape variety. Planet, easily, right? yeah. easily, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think almost number one grape variety. I believe yeah, grape is the variety, number yeah. one grape variety yeah. in Australia, Chardonnay. Yeah, um, but um, I didn't bring something from the Riverland, so. Um, if it's not from the river, because I tell you what, you know, just delinquentes just stepping up, because well, <laughs> that's gnarly. That's a really cool wine. Okay. Um, so therefore, Bean, is it from? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll start with Australian no, okay. states. Yeah, yeah. We'll do we'll do three states. We'll go South Australia, Victoria, or Tasmania. Wow. Because I thought it was none of those. Okay, well, you know, oh, it was Marks. Oh, Marks. Yeah, okay. yeah, it was Marks. I was, was going to throw that in like there. Damn. Nice and flinty. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was thinking, flinty. I was dropping SA out of the Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, SA, Vic, or Taz? I think it's, it's like, I'm so, um, I'm like, Rule to South Australia because I just like, I just don't believe stuff like this regularly comes up. And I'm always surprised by it. I'm always like, jet, like, it's a welcome surprise to see Chardonnay of this quality mm. and sort of coming up, but I think it's Victoria. Okay. Well, are we allowed to do that now? Let's yeah, we, I assume we can. I assume okay. we guessed it was white. <laughs> Very good. Um, so, being Chardonnay Australian, it is from, what did you say? Victoria. It's from Tasmania. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. For real? Yeah, which I thought you'd be your next tune. Oh no, because, from New Zealand. Yeah, I thought you'd go New Zealand, Tasmania. I just I just tend to find that, um, yeah. Chardonnays out of Tasmania tend to be hyper lean. Yeah. Almost a little bit like they're airing on the side of, of under ripeness, whereas I feel like sunlight exposure and whatever clonal shit's going on in New Zealand, they're able to achieve actual fruit ripeness with a balance of acidity, whereas I think a balance of acidity is favoured in Tasmania by harvesting perhaps a touch prematurely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so yeah, they tend to be like this. This is just this is perfectly sort of poised. Yep. It's just really pristine. I think also you know Margaret River, you know, with the ginseng clone, which retains so much acidity, yet with the flavour that they can get, um, yeah. also can make it a confusing element for options for Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, because I was going from New Zealand to Margs <laughs> <laughs> to Not Vic. Yeah. You're like that's just east helping him out. <laughs> Talk about east to west. So if we're okay, in, cool. in Tasmania. Chardonnay. Um, I think we might go vintage next. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because we already guessed the variety. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah, what else could this we be? Did it could that. be Fumé Blanc. It could be like a really... <laughs> it could the be best a really Fumé nice Blanc ever made. Well, I've had some pretty tidy little Puyi Fumé styles. It could have piano like, down there now. Yeah, I, I doubt it would be warm enough to get okay. right. I, I think they do have it there, but I, I really highly doubt anywhere like south of Victoria mm -hmm. is going to get yep. get piano right. But it's definitely Chardonnay. I'm sorry. Like, Were you correct? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's quite a good because we were talking about Chardonnay before, and uh, you know, yeah, really sort of how, that. yeah, and this is this is amazing. This is quite one. There's a lot going on in this one. There's you know, it's giving so many different elements, which is what I'm enjoying about it. I think it's young. I think it's really. I think this could be a new release either. It'll be either 18 or 19. I'll give it. I'll give it the props and say it's 18. 19. Okay. So it is fresh, it is super fresh. fresh. Yeah. This will be yum. It only got in my got hot hands today, and I was very excited. So that was, uh, you know, I was thinking of bringing something else from Tasmania. Actually, it was a Pinot from Ricky Bobby, Ricky Evans, two-ton Tassie. I reckon this is a, a Chardonnay from Ricky Bobby. <laughs> 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 it's not. It's not. That, <laughs> that box arrived two weeks earlier. So um, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, it's another producer. Um, the ballpark to be in though. Do you want to have a stab at what the producer is? Or do you um, want a couple options? Or? Give us some options. All right. Um, okay. I'll make it easy for you. Easy for you. Um, let's go. I so already know what it is. Reggie. Joe Holyman. I haven't had a lot of Holyman. From the North. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the the North. Dr. Edge. The North. Or Toll Puddle. Right, Toll Puddle's improved. And that's Toll Puddle. Mm -hmm. um, that's to Toll Puddle's looking really pretty. Uh, could be Toll Puddle, um, but I, I think it's not Toll Puddle. It could be Hollyman. I don't, haven't had a lot of the, the Joe Hollyman wines. I know they're very good, but I think it's Dredgy. I think it's Dr. Edge. It is. So, it's got it, something right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. I have to. I would have to. I've got everything else wrong. So he does four, four Chardonnays. Um, he does... Really? Yeah, north, south, east, and... Middle. The whole... The whole <laughs> a uh, blend. Like, a blend. Like he used to yeah. do with his Pinots, but he's... Is he switched to Chardonnay or is he doing both? I think he's doing both, both but obviously 19 difficulties with the vintage of Pinot and smoke. Oh yeah, it was so fine. Yeah, yeah. Probably a bit limited, so I'm not sure what he's doing with Pinot. He has made 19, I think. But he does get quite a bit of fruit from the East Coast as well, so they would have been, um, I presume, fine 2019. So, If you had to pick a grape variety that you just absolutely like you can like desert island grape variety it's the only grape variety you can make and drink <laughs> what would it be oh okay yeah. we've had this question on the show yeah. before oh no just privately yeah yeah no. oh i think we have like we, we what would you same. make and what would you drink mine's the same answer shannon shannon yeah, like shannon. yeah. <laughs> so one grape variety i get to work with and do whatever i like with i'd probably go pinot you would yeah because it make a rosé when it's hot, I can make a sparkling wine, and I can make a serious red. Can you do sweet wines? Yeah, I can make lolly water rosé. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, we've we've all, just do Pinot Carbo. We, that we, makes we've all had Burton Hand Sparkling, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but is that actually Pinot? Or is it, uh, <laughs> uh, just having some more of the lamb and rosemary shapes, I finally worked out what it tastes like. Beef stock powder with generic herbs. I'm pretty confident, uh, Christina, that is legitimately what lamb and rosemary shapes actually are. Pretty much just beef stock powdered just a bit of salt bait over the top and then generic herbs i know a lot about the ingredients that go into shapes and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> yeah. uh and of course noah you wrote a, an amazing article about uh wine matching in shapes and we have noticed that uh places, apparently shapes, shapes i think noah you're a trendsetter hit the, hit the zeitgeist <laughs> <laughs> absolute trendsetter um and the sales going, of shapes have gone up well, I'll tell you what, the sales of 2016 Jono Hersey's Cloak Kyber have gone <laughs> But I still haven't gotten my dozen, Jono. Yeah. Uh, I want to know where my dozen is. It's like, where's your Baron, Freddy? Hi, Andres. Uh, <laughs> Andres Mostert's uh, chimed yeah. in as well. Love you, MD, you bloody legend. Legend. Mate, we love you as well. Uh, oh, no, the power move is gone. No, we, well, we, oh, there wasn't really much of a power move, was yeah, it? There's, there's either a power move where you guess the wine immediately or it's a clean sweep, which we like. I reckon, I reckon we're going to reinvent the power move. We're gonna, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is write down, write it down first, and then we're gonna proceed with the game. Because I think the power move, you just get it. You're like, 
someone's anticipated this wine. It's like, yeah, I've brought this cool wine. I'm going to pour it out. And the other person's just like, boom, boom, boom. And they power move it. And you're just deflated. Right. I think you should play it. And then at the end, we'll reveal what we thought it was. Okay. You know, I reckon that'll be a, that'll be a good way to do it. Oh, yeah, we got we got paper and pen here. Can I rip that up? Yeah, yeah, cool. We can rip that up. Yeah, on the next on the next wine on the next wine, we're gonna we're gonna play play a little bit of uh, play a little bit of power move. Um, so if you weren't making wine in the Adelaide Hills, what would I be doing? What um, would you be doing? Probably be a farmer. Yeah, yeah, legit. Yeah. You wouldn't make wine anywhere else. Oh, in the, I thought you meant just like no. If you weren't like, making wine, wine, no, no. Yeah. Outside, like if you gotta make wine anywhere, anywhere else. else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think it changes all the time, you know. Um, Based on sort of like what you, yeah. Uh, what's what's got you really excited recently? Like what? I'll probably say Spain, and yeah. maybe oh like I saw you actually had one of the wines in one of the episodes. A uh, Gareth brought it um, on the Canary Islands. Oh yeah, oh, yeah cool. Was, um, have, you, have you been? Or been? No, I've never been. Um, I'd be fascinated to go there and see because you know I've had that uh, Bianco from Innovate before, and it's. Like you could mistake it as a beautiful, you know, white burgundy, like so a Chablis, it's like so pristine and fine and um, explore that would be something pretty unique. I think, you know, going to the staple regions, uh, you know, would have its huge challenges. So, so seeking out something, even Etna as well, would probably be another one on the list as well. Um, but yeah, I reckon the Canary Islands at the moment. It's hard, it's hard being a winemaker on Etna. Really hard. Like yeah. that, that, that's something that I've, I've uh, when we were there, we were talking through a bunch of people that had come from outside of Etna yep. to come and work on Etna, and there's like a big mafia thing. Yeah, okay. I'd it's like that, people yeah. um, uh, born in the region. Well, Anna Martins, of course, Aussie uh, oh, yeah. is is set up there, and um, yeah, yeah, you know, it it's sort of like um, Vina Diana. Okay. Yeah. And but she was also one of the amazing winemakers. At um, there's an amazing estate on Etna. It starts with a P. It's one of the high Passa Pichiaro. That's yeah, the Pichiaro. one I was thinking. Now they're, they've got yeah. all the conventional varieties. You know, they've got cap, they've got some Cabernet Sauvignon and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. So. Um, highest altitude vineyards, I think. I'm pretty confident in saying Passa Pichiaro is the highest altitude vineyards in, on Etna. Um, Twelve hundred meters. Or? Oh, like no. 2,000 meters? Yeah, I think, yeah. and the rest. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, a lot, a lot higher than we see here. Uh, yeah, that's, okay. Well, that's that's higher than Kosciuszko. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, Kosciuszko, I think, is like 2,200 meters. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not that high. <laughs> it really? Oh, I, Mount Kosciuszko? I don't even know. Oh, wow, nice. you're really fact-checking me here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, no, no, because... Uh, 2,228 meters. That's right. That's right. Glory. Never mind. Glory. <laughs> <laughs> 2,200 meters. Denver is basically that high. <laughs> it's, it's not really that high. But I mean, they, they're growing grapes, obviously, that, that high. But um, they were saying that, um, you know, when you're an outsider there, a lot of people are like, why, why are you here? Did mm. you ever get that experience in Italy? Well, so after vintage at Barolo in 2010, I, um, I went to this wine festival called the Murano Wine Festo, Festival mm. in Alto Adige. It's and insane. It was, and it was, yeah, it was incredible. And I was there with Ricky Evans. I was there with Steve Crawford. Um, and a few others, and I actually went into the um, ceiling room, and you know, it was my first ever experience of Mirello de Mascolese, and um, you know, met the guys who just started up Gracci, um, and Ricky and I actually, funny story, um, caught the eye of uh, the poorer behind there, and we thought, oh, this, you know, these wines are incredible, but yeah, we've got to go down and visit. And um, so we went down there, and a friend of ours um, was actually living and working down there from WA, Sammy Vincello. Um, oh, Vincello, yeah, 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 yeah Sam Vincello. So yeah. he was working for Frank Cornelius. Couldn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so we went to stay. We met him and Catania. Had a, we were quite young back then. Had a bit of a you know night out in Catania. We we're in the fish market, and Sammy the next morning in the market just stuck in the corner, skewering in a pot blind and. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, so Aussies yeah. on yeah. tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, he was hometown, so he was embarrassed. Yeah. Because um, he was trying to fit into that culture, as you're sort of yeah. talking about. So, that's Solikiata in, oh, no, in Catania. In Catania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just went down there and we popped up to Etna, and um, Ricky and I went in to visit Grachi and a few other producers, Paso Pichera, and um, came back to, to see uh, Sammy. And his house, or Frank's house, he was living in was on the facade of the road. So we're coming in and we had to pull cut across the road and park on the other side. Spent the night there playing score for this Italian card yeah. game and um, heaps of bottles of wine. Woke up in the morning, a little bit foggy and um, jumped across the road, got in the car to go to our first appointment. And um, of course, just turned around, we were you know, pulled over on the other side of the road. 
got to the first um, corner and came to the realisation we're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and, and, there's, and, there's, and there's this truck coming <laughs> straight <laughs> for us. <laughs> and we're like, oh, shit. And I was driving and then I turned like away off the side of the road, which is kind of weird in itself, but I guess natural at the time. Um, and the you know truck slammed on his brakes and was coming sideways, about to roll. It's two D, and there's like five cars behind it. Just like, oh my god, I <laughs> nearly, nearly died. Got into the town. Um, didn't actually skip a heartbeat at that point in time. It wasn't until we got into the town we like cheated. Death. Well, we almost died. And then call up we, Sam- we almost yeah, died. and we call up Sammy and to go further back to your conversation. He was like. Oh, no one saw you, did they? He wasn't really concerned about our lives or anything. He was just concerned that they didn't, it wouldn't oh. be pulled back to him oh so that, God. you know, he wouldn't get in trouble. Oh, your mates, you know, going over uh, on yeah, the wrong side of the road. Right. <laughs> it is, they're like really close-knit towns. Like you could, you could, like not, like they could take you out in the woods, mate. And yeah. not, you, they won't ever find the body. So, like, yeah, it was like quite... You're in, you're in trouble, <laughs> you know. Exactly. It was... Um, Quite an experience. Um, so yeah, that was my little experience of heading around uh, visiting over there. So obviously, amazing stories from overseas. Mm-hmm. You work in a family business. Mm-hmm. What was it like taking over the reins from your old man? I wouldn't say I've taken over the reins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could be watching. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, you know I've come in with I guess my. Uh, experience and uh, you know my winemaking tech, technical side of things as well and brought that into the business and evolved um, the wine program um, and introduced new wines and evolved that side of things and quite, quite so. significantly and, and your brother Andrew as well yeah he's a you know amazing graphic designer and amazing design mind in general yeah absolutely. Um, and he's com- completely revamped sort of everything but um, your I seem to remember there was sort of two two Murdoch Hill labels running concurrently mm-hmm. uh, yeah. at, at, and, and they seem to have sort of merged into becoming yeah. one of recent years. I think, I think um, you go, you know, my first vintage that I came home in 2012, released, um, I guess, you know, had all these different influences along the way mm. um, and I couldn't, I wanted to really experiment with those and sort of channel what, you know, I was feeling and, and what I wanted to express um, and I couldn't really put that into the the family range that my parents established, it was too out there, too wacky to, you know, they'd just be so confused. So I had to introduce something quite different. So we, we started the Artists and the Series by Murdoch Hill um, with different labels. And I think one of the first uh, reviews from like Benny on Wine Front was like, oh shit, it's like Murdoch Hills had a sex change. You know? <laughs> Fancy <laughs> bottle, wax tops. <laughs> what is it? No, because they, they were markedly different. I, admittedly, I actually discovered Murdoch Hills wines via that range. Yeah. yeah. I think when I was working down at Parade Cellars yep. and so keen to get them in and I got absolutely hooked on that Syrah, the Landau yep, Syrah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess from there, it, you know, over the years I continued to make those and then it became, um, I guess, evolving the Murdoch Hill range because I started you know making all the wine so initially it was just experimenting with a couple of batches and proving that I could make that work and then um, we brought all the wine that you were getting more media than they were <laughs> uh, no no I think they were, they were stoked and proud and um, you know thrilled to see the evolution and direction um, that we've taken it in so how did you come up with the names for like because there was like there's the, the Landau the Phaeton the Tilbury, it, the the Tilbury. yeah these are all Names of different horse-drawn carriages. So my grandfather acquired a property <laughs> niche, <laughs> a little bit niche. Making some, uh, tw- you know, 18, 20 wines now. Not all of them in, in that series, but yeah, my grandfather was a an avid collector of these horse-drawn carriages. He had some 30 or 40 of them at one point in time. Um, you know, there's book written about him, and you know, he had a huge collection. A lot of them were donated and um, given to the museum, but. There's one carriage which we haven't used yet, so maybe you can bring trust with me to come up with a wine, but um, it's called the Drag. And um, <laughs> this this is a, a, I think it was an 11 or 12 seater. Um, he got it in Gorwa, and he actually, you know the movie Picnic at Hanging Rock, the original? Oh yeah, yeah, classic. yeah. yeah, yeah. So the yeah. beginning, that's my grandfather taking the school children down to the rock in the drag. I, don't, I think they filmed it around here in Mount Pleasant. For real? Yeah, and we're For still real? and we still got this vehicle at home in the barn. It was a pretty. It wasn't. It wasn't like a. Um. It wasn't like a happy movie. 
I know it wasn't. <laughs> it could be fooled by the name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought picnics were fun. Yeah. yeah, it's not a happy movie. No, no. And your dad, you're saying, you know, we could go into, like, you have, like, a shed on your property of very old farming implements <laughs> and, and, and horse-drawn carts and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so lots of those floating around. That was the inspiration behind the names. I just wanted to bring it back to, you know, my grandfather acquired the property that yeah, yeah. You know, we're all benefiting from over the years. And yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Andrew being my middle brother, we're always, um, you know, closer, I guess, in the sense going through school that period of time. You know, he was my role model. He was older than me. I would always follow. Um, oh, he's older than you, is he? Yeah. yeah oh, wow. The pup. Uh, <laughs> you know, what music he was into. So I'd always use him as a trend. Friendly yeah. sort of setter and um, yeah, no, it's great to be doing business with. So you're saying basically your brother is why you're cool? <laughs> if you like to think that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm keen to, to, to um, see how you go okay, with a yeah. little cheeky bit of blind tasting All as well. Right. So um, feel free to grab a bottle off the back wall, mm -hmm. uh, Mickey D. And um, I don't know what they are. So you're, it's completely sort of open to, yeah, could be whatever. And yeah. Um, of course, we are. Oh yeah, we got the piece of paper. We got a pen here. All good. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play a bit of power move game so we can see we can see how we go. Um, and of course, we are talking about uh, the only sport left in Australian television, but apparently NRL is coming back. Um, it, we are talking about blind tasting. AFL is back June 11. AFL yeah, exactly. is back June 11. <laughs> NRL is back tonight. NRL is back. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Is, I, I don't know. I but heard, appara apparently, back, NRL is back really, really, really soon because. People, people are like it's conflicted. Like weekend, well, they're conflicted whether they're going to listen to this <laughs> show yeah. or watch NRL, <laughs> like drink wine and watch NRL. You can do whatever you want. You can still watch NRL as well. You can picture in picture. It's okay. Um, Yuko Frost, evening. Um, we, we still have, for those who are wondering why their comments aren't up on the screen, I've just wanted to take away the comment chat box because our friend over at Twitch is just having a field day. Um, but don't worry, I can see all the comments. Uh, and they're highly distracting and fun uh, to, 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 to read. Okay, Murdoch Hill, idea for you. you know, the drag? Yeah. Murdoch Hill, Fiano. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking of a slutty rose. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too literal. Way yeah. too literal. Way too literal, I think. Um, no, so, so have you, has, has um, varieties like. Like Mediterranean varieties entered the sphere, into the, the uh, realm of Myrtle Hill. Yeah, like definitely. The, when I mean, when I first met and Dolcetto, <laughs> and he just looked at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so I've sort of been embracing and working with what we've got. Um, you know, I, I recently went and visited Steve Panel, and he probably, um, and I got an opportunity to taste with David Ridge a number of uh, Barolos and Barbarescos recently from 2016, which are outstanding. Sordo and these guys. Um, so I kind of got uh, reacquainted with my love of Nebbiolo and coming out here to Gumaraka and going past the Protero vineyard. Um, you know, that's something that's always been on the radar, but other other things, uh, yeah, no, that's probably about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do say that Pinot is for Nebbiolo fans who kind of hack tannin. Yeah. I think there's there's a degree of a degree of truth to that. Um, all right, so jumping on to, to this particular wine, blind tasting. Noah's going to be playing the, the the game. We're going to be shoving the comments down, so we will not know what's going on. It is a little so bit. What's uh, the go with the so what we're going to do? What we're going to do is prior to us even like starting the questions, mm -hmm. have a taste, have a think, write oh, down right, what you think it is, and then hide it. Oh, okay. Hide it. Yeah, do we have to unveil it after? We'll unveil, we'll unveil it after. Be, okay. as, be as close as you possibly can. Right. If you can get down to producer, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Um, if you can't, don't stress. But we want to know at this particular point in time, if you're actually thinking like what it is exactly like, you know, if you've already nailed it, you know. <laughs> I'm so it's a tough line. line though. I'm just gonna write that. Mugby, you're not playing the game. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's it's bready. It's bready. It's 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 it's, 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 it's a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> just wrote Brett. That's all it is. It's a bit gnarly. It's a bit gnarly. But there's you know, something underneath it. We'll, we'll discover it. There's some joy. There's definitely some joy. I 
mean, it's hyper reductive. There's, there's a myriad of different sort of, I guess, technical issues with the wine. Uh, and technical, you know, beauty in the eye of the beholder. So Noah's running in this game? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm running in this game. Another pen. Okay, okay. You finish. Mm. Answers to the camera, and we'll go from there. All oh, right, maybe, That's it's, if, bad maybe it's like if you get, you know, like voted out from right. the, 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 you know, you know, when the people are like, uh, Venus Game of Survivor uh, is what we're playing right now. Come on, Mickey, you can't yeah. fucking like, you know, we, you got to be able to show the camera this shit. All right. All right, so go right right up to the camera like this. Yeah, yeah, oh, show, show it. Oh, we're yeah. going to show them beforehand. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to focus or not, but... We'll, give we'll, it a we'll have a crack. Um, like, my writing is terrible. You will not. That's fine. It's like it's in, fine. It's, it's in fine. my own crypt, cryptic nature. No one will understand that <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Probably not, but they'll be able to get a hint. Because um, I wrote Brett so big on it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to go for a producer. I'm just going to like take a, ra a random stab at, at region and variety and okay. vintage. Yeah. Um, is, is, this is this is what I think it is. If uh, again, I don't know if that's actually focusing, but you know, we'll give it a crack. Okay, let's do this. Let's play the game. All right. Fine taste. Okay, we'll throw that in the bin. So <laughs> that, I want to have a, I wanna have I, a sauce. I want to. So um, I want to start fresh and like rethink it because part of the game, <laughs> I want to start fresh and rethink because part of the game, the options when you work through the question, it kind of tweaks and changes. I don't confirm if anyone's got it yet. We don't want to know if anyone's got it. So. These are really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. This is fun. It gives me cheat sheets. Um, all right. Is it new world or old world? Oh, that's why we shouldn't have given it to him because now he's going to throw in red herrings and shit. Yeah, okay. Um, well, firstly, it's red wine. Who it is red wine? Yeah. I think we should just get I think I've got that. It's red wine. Bit of tannin. There is some Breton white wine. Yeah, but just not to <laughs> not this like level. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is very There's rare. a bit here. There's a bit here. Um, all right, so as well. So I just think that um, the funk that we see at this level in Australia is very well um, mimicked on the palate, typically. Yeah. Like, you can't hide from it. Whereas this wine has some redeeming qualities to it. Um, and I'm talking about technical qualities. Um, I, w I would actually just drink this, but I would, I would hope that this wine would not be hyper expensive, you know? Mm -hmm. I would hope that this would be, I'd serve it in a tumbler and the, just drink it. The biggest, the biggest bottle, you know? Oh, what did you? <laughs> you went bottom end. <laughs> Wide bottom end. Let's see how we go. All oh, right. Um, yeah, so we're allowed to do that now. Yeah. So it's def yep. yeah. definitely Old World. Uh, are we going? Switzerland, Italy, France. Switzerland, I mean, was it like, I, was, I mean, I don't know of many reds coming out of Switzerland apart from Pinot Noir. Yeah, Pinot Noir and Chasselas. Yeah. I'll stick to France. I'm sticking to France as well. I don't. Uh, I don't think it's Italy. It's fair, it's France. Okay, they've both done well here. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I think we both got it right. <laughs> did we just out of curiosity? Did we both guess the same thing? No. Oh wow. Okay. Very much no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Because either we're both really wrong. Someone's hail hey, married it, or uh, <laughs> no, we, the, we can't both be right. right. Country, I mean, country. So. <laughs> All right, are we going Loire, mm -hmm. Beaujolais, mm -hmm. Burgundy? Oh damn, my, 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 my choice wasn't in there. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Lo Loire, uh, Beaujolais or Berg? Oh. Oh, it's, are you saying, is it between Beaujolais or Loire? Because I, mean, I don't know any Berg that's like this. I'm sticking that. Yeah, I think Bajo might as well go with what I wrote. <laughs> yeah, like a really cool gamme. Yeah. Be a really cool. Be a really cool gamme. What's the answer you're gonna lock in here, Brendan? Mm -hmm. It could also be a really cool cab funk. Cool, um, I'm gonna go with gamme. That would be my second choice. It would be, it would be some really cool, uh, like Beaujolais. It'd be Beaujolais. It's Burgundy. Really? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's Burgundy. That's what he said, it's what it's said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says in the bottle. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow, someone released this in Burgundy. They I must be the most, yeah. most loved people down at the pub. <laughs> Russo. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, true. Maybe I did pick well. <laughs> <laughs> so you wait, you went you went I Beaujolais. went Beaujolais. You went Beaujolais on yeah, Beaujolais. They went Beaujolais. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. But I thought yeah. it might have been Lurie because it's a bit more lifted, it's not yeah. as structured as more. I was, I was, now in, it makes I was sense in Jura Pino. Trousseau territory. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, well, not yeah. far off, not Not far off. Um, no, we're Pinot in Burgundy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, really? Why All right, can we go further? Okay. Yeah, can we go further? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna struggle here. Okay. 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 Really I mean, don't, don't need to go like into like subregions if you don't want to. I mean, we're yeah, I'm not going into subregions. Yeah. This is in a very, very. Yeah, but I mean, go. Is is it legitimately Pinot or is it Pinot Meunier? So that's the really two options, really. Because I, I, that's I, the big Pinot Noir. Really? Yeah. We'll just go with your guts here, guys. I don't think this is this is the most whack Pinot Noir I've ever tried. I'm going to say it's Pinot Meunier. I'm going to say it's going to be a weird other variety inside Burgundy because I just can't. And that's Pinot Noir. I don't know what they've done to it to make it taste like that. It's yeah. I'd say it's probably Village, but you're not thinking it's Premier Cru. Yeah? You know, there's like a sweet overripe, underripe thing going on. Yeah. Like quite redeeming on the palate more mm. so than it is on the nose. It's not dried out. No, no, at all. No, it's a juiciness, back palate yeah. juiciness thing going on as well. It's not really so phenolic stuff like there it's is herbaceous. There's a bit of bit of whole bunch of stuff there. Honestly, Opening up, I reckon it should have been decanted. Like, yeah, honestly, really it's got like, shades like, of something like what BK would do. Actually, honestly, mm -hmm. that's what I'm kind of uh, I'm like his skin and bones. <laughs> um, a vintage will be the interesting one because you know Burgundy often expresses vintage. Well, what 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 did you write down? The vintage. I said 17 things. Yeah, you both did 17. 17. But now I'm unsure. I'm going to stick with 17. Mm. Alright, let's go 17, 16, 15. Yeah, I need a 16 or 17 now. But, um, Where oh. a vintage in 16? It's also a producer as well, because 17 has generally a really good core, but could be something that's a bit croppy. Oh. No, let's stick with 17. 16. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? Domaine de la Crasse. Domaine de la Crasse. Crass. Crass. By Marc Sawyer. From it's Dijon. A it is a monopole. No, it's not bad. Yeah, 12 wow. and a half percent. Yeah, that's interesting. That's incredible. Who brings it in? Uh, real ones. Oh, it's Wait. real ones. Yeah, wow. There you go. Check that out. All organically managed. What's it? What's it? Uh, do we have like a retail price? Retail price is 120 bucks. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Told you. I don't know. It's just from a monopole burgundy and stuff like that. I just, I, I, I would have expected. So I think I want to see this sort of, you know, in a decanter because it, like, even now you're sort of noting. So the reduction's blowing off. Mm. The bread's not so, in, like, I don't, I don't think it's because we've been revealed burgundy. It's legitimate sort of blowing off, but... Yeah, I agree. Actually. It's, um... Yeah. Definitely got something French about it, doesn't it? It's Frenchy. Not being cliche to the Brit, but, you know, that's pulled back and, you know, there's this other character there that's quite savoury and enjoyable. Bit of Berg. 2016 John Major Lacroix. Yeah, wow. I want to see this. Really I, mean, I misspelled Begonia there, so I apologize, everyone. Oh no, I spelled it right. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is the closest BC has got to dissing a wine. Look, guys, look. If I love a wine, I'll absolutely tell you the truth. Like I, I wouldn't say, and that's one thing that I hope that over the last two and a bit months, um, you know, you got like, you know, if you've picked up some of the wines that we've actually spruced on the show, um, uh, you know, this, this wine here, I, I personally struggle with primarily because of uh, two things. Firstly, that price point. Is, yeah, I find a little bit challenging. I think there's wines at that price point that are that are exceedingly just mind blowing. Um, maybe there's something about the producer, the rarity of it, the fact that it is a monopole. A monopole literally meaning this this producer owns 100 of of that vineyard that it comes from, and it is a vineyard that is that would be determined by appellation in Burgundy. So there would be a rarity to this particular wine that I think would be perhaps driving the price up. I assume that you know because real wines is bringing in real wines is an amazing importer, a very very amazing importer. Um, with some of the most amazing, talented Soms sommeliers behind it, um, so I, I give the benefit of the doubt in that that circum circumstance. Um, it took me a while to be able to identify that that's that's Pinot, 
I really did. Yeah. And both both of us didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it feels lean, you know, but you know, maybe it just needs to open up. Maybe you need some time and sell it. Maybe I, I don't know. But um uh, Brandon, but, do you mind bringing the bottle forward a little bit? Uh yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's go. There is some fucking great ones. Have you ever had a man who's just like making his oh, very... Still I, it's actually a, it's a, it's a supply chain of entertainment. Uh, <laughs> Twitch is entertaining us, uh, and I hope we're entertaining you. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I don't think, I don't believe in dissing a wine, if, like saying a wine is shit. Um, there's, there's wines that have been terribly made. Um, I, I think what has happened here is like maybe a, a, the winemaker hasn't um, interfered in the wine where maybe they probably should have but i don't also don't believe that the winemaker just did it with ignorance i think i think yeah. you never knew that this wine would turn out the way it is and, and there could be a there's a myriad of different ways that this wine could turn out the way it has based on a, a numerous factors um that are completely uncontrollable um but at the moment it's probably not something that i'd jump at the chance at but i'd like to see it in a couple of years time i'd like to see it flash decanted i'd like to see some some time and air and perhaps it probably is. And I think if you ask the sommeliers behind it, they probably, if they serve this to you in a restaurant, I assure you that that's what they would do. Um, there is absolutely no, um, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There is terribly made wine. Yeah. There is terribly made wine. There is ignorant wine. That's not ignorant wine. That's just a, you know, that's that's just how they make wine there. Um, but yeah. There's um, nothing wrong with the wine. It's, you know, it's, it's drinkable. It's, you know, it's enjoyable. Um, sure, you know, there's some issues around would, you know, things, but you know, it, it opens up and, and will be a joyous wine. Yeah, I reckon this is right, well, maybe we'll try it, maybe try it tomorrow. Yeah, it's like I reckon I'm gonna revisit that. Actually, I'll do that. Um, that'd be, that'd, be, that'd can, be interesting. I'm gonna actually hold on to that and I'll revisit to revisit it tomorrow as well because, yeah, it is you know, the idea in a temperature and storage of, of the wine is so critical. Um, mm. and sometimes you know, if things do get warm, it enhances the opportunity for something to bloom. Um, such, such as Britannomyces, um, and this might have only just happened recently in summer coming over and there was shipment, uh, but each bottle will be different and can express differently at different times, and that's the beauty about wine. Um, have you ever had shit that's gone into bottle? That's just completely gone right? I've had, I've had batches that have bloomed, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> What, did you just say bloomed? Bloomed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a negative way, I guess. <laughs> it's um, just gone down. So diplomatic. But, uh, you know, I guess sometimes you've just got to you know, take each character, um, you know, as a different influence to the wine, as long as it's not stripping and um, taking away too much from the fruit, then, you know, it still can be a joyous, enjoyable wine. Well, how about this one, mate? How yeah. about this one? So, um, we it was 2015, right? Yes. We brought in a whole bunch of Adelaide Hills Fiano and I had this idea, I'm like, how can you best showcase the sheer searing acidity of Fiano? Leave some residual sugar in it. Uh, I think you've told me this yeah. story before. We left 25 <laughs> grams residual in this. this, this, this for the this. Japanese market? No, 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 not, not for one. the Japanese market, but it became oh, for the became Japanese market. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it's called Panda Panda. It's actually available on, on our website at the moment, but I assure you it doesn't have the same problems that this one had. And we're calling around like our mates so we want to try to like not interfere. We're going to try and not have to filter it. And like, how do you actually get across the whole filtration thing in natural wine if you want to do, you know, residual sweetness? Mm. A bunch of our mates were like, nah, mate, you know, I never, I never filter our shit. And you're like, look at Mac Forbes. He never fucking filters his, you know, RS stuff ever, ever. So like, <laughs> screw it. It's gone straight in bottle. Uh, and uh, yeah, sure enough, 25 grams residual, which is about, to give you perspective, that's more than double the amount of sugar that you would want in your wine for pet nap. Yeah. Maybe, maybe close to double what you'd want in champagne. Uh, so yeah, we ended up uh, releasing it and it started to, to get spritzy and then it started to get really get spritzy. And uh, fortunately, the bottles that we used were built for Frizzante style bottles that could go to like yeah. nine atmosphere. So we're like, yeah. at least we're not gonna have exploding bottles and bottle shops shelves. That, was that crown, would be- Crown sealed? No, man, it was cork. It was DR. Okay. So it that would was pop in corks. Well, it was that's... popping corks and then fizzing over yeah. and, and very, very alive, very much alive. <laughs> um, now, if Soms had kept them in the, in the, the fridge, it was fantastic yeah. because, um, you know, of course, what's gonna make a off dry wine like shine, if not high acid, well, what makes sparkling wine shine? High acid. So we kind of had 
a, a, a great wine turning into potentially what could be an even greater wine happening in bottle. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, on the back of the label, we didn't actually say off dry because that's like one of those things uh, we yeah. like never say off dry because <laughs> then the Somme's going to write that on a wine list and people are going to be like, I don't want off dry. No, I never. Yeah, yeah, so we wrote sure. experimental Fiano. Yeah. And so no one knew what they were getting, whether it was pet. So <laughs> we built this reputation. <laughs> across the whole industry yeah. of making a, uh, a, you know, oh, you know, panda, panda, pet nap, panda, panda, pet nap. I'm like, it wasn't a pet nap. It was an off dry that completely fucked up. We'd sent the first array of, yeah, wines to Japan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were like blessed to be in Japan, very, very lucky to be in Japan. So, you know, we called him up and said, hey, come back up again because it was middle of winter. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm like, look, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to probably refund you everything because it's all gone through a re-fermentation by the bottle. And uh, our guy there, Yutaka, it was like, oh, you know, let me just uh, let me just take it out to the trade and show it around a little bit and just see how it is. Free sold the whole lot. And the, the, just the novelty factor alone was so insane that uh, he said, look, grab it all back from all the other places that you're selling in Australia that you have to and send it all to us. We sent him <laughs> another shipment of this wine oh, that had gone, yeah. had gone right. And it went so nuts in Japan that um, if you remember the label we used to have was like a person's face mm -hmm. that was like painted like a panda yeah we got start, started getting these weird instagrams kind of like the weird comments where their children painted their faces as pandas and got them to braid around the room with the different bottles as they were like popping open and fizzing out <laughs> and stuff like that i'm like hey look someone's having fun with it but it was just a little uh, bit i mean there's a there's, there's a bit of a, a cultural clash i guess so a difference i guess there's a positive in in all things isn't there Yes, yeah, so, uh, something's yeah, gonna always come, come right. from something. Huh? It's 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 how post-it notes happened, right? Yeah. You know, someone uh, someone someone happened to spill a bunch of glue on something, and you know, <laughs> created. You know, I'm not sure how glue happened, but I'm pretty confident it a wasn't of, a very great way. Yeah. Let's not get into that. Sad horse. <laughs> it's very sad horse. Uh, guys, and on that note, we are hitting the hour mark. Uh, thank you very much for chiming in and staying with us. Uh, so sorry about what Twitch had to do, so I had to pull the comments off halfway through. Um, I'm going to be tra tackling that tomorrow and trying to figure out how I can make sure that that doesn't happen for tomorrow's guests, uh, who is, of course, none other than Justine Henschke of the eponymous Henschke uh, brand and winery. Um, mate, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and thank you so much for, for blind tasting with us, bring some amazing wine. Um, and just keep literally smashing out. Uh, you brought one of the most amazing reasons. Amazing. Is it released yet? Yeah. yeah no, is it on the website? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, link is in the description, so you can actually get one of the most amazing Rieslings I'm going to say out of the Adelaide Hills, possibly ever. Cool. What's it like? What's the price tag? I think it's about 30 bucks. Fucking dope. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, okay. yeah, seriously. That next level. That is that is long term investment stuff. We will have Riesling as much as Chardonnay. Yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> I prefer. I, I'm a Riesling person. Yeah. I love Riesling, uh, and uh, yeah, this is one of those those like I want to see it in 30 years kind of deals. Uh, you okay. definitely want to jump on it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Catch you same time tomorrow.